I would like to welcome everybody uh, here today. So good to see each one of you who are signing in. I say it before and I'll say it again, it's like Christmas to me to see each one of you. We thank you for uh, coming uh, to be with us today to hear this. I believe I have something to say to you from the Lord this morning and before I get started I just want to thank all of you who have been watching I would like to share with you a few instructions that I need to share with our whole congregation and then we'll get started in the message <clears throat> I would um, for each of our leaders that I've appointed in our local church to be um, over a certain group to watch out for them thank you for all that you've been doing uh, I do have a <clears throat> a message for our next three weeks that I'd like to share with you uh, and I'd like you to call all of your people and share with them this message <clears throat> next week we're going to uh, be having service here on our parking lot and uh, we are going to have our cars spaced by some of the fellows that we will get to position you as you should be but um, you get to roll your windows down and uh, we'll have our sound system out there and our music and we'll be standing out there on the parking lot those of you that know our parking lot will know where the vans are parked we'll be parking there and then down by the um, where the basketball goal is that area down there I would be parking there we want everybody to face their car toward <clears throat> the edge of our building where the um, kitchen that corner where the kitchen is so that's all I'm going to say about that we will start at 11 o'clock again on that day please work with those who help park you and please come early enough to get parked because we want to fill up our parking lot if we can okay the following week we'll do the same thing and then the next week, uh, which will be our third week, uh, st starting with next week, the third week we will actually come in the building and begin our restoration, I guess, of assembly within the building. And we're going to need to work together on that to make it work uh, well. So thank you for that. Um, I'd like to ask one more thing. I see... Uh, the number of shares that we have of the message that we preach and I appreciate all of you that share I'm going to ask all of you if you would to share with everyone that you can especially for this local city of Sand Springs and and the county here of Tulsa we want to reach people and if the Word of God is good to you we want it to be shared with everybody we can so uh, you'll notice that at the bottom of your video that you're looking at there's a arrow where you can share this message also if you would some of you may want to start a watch party um, if you do that you just start it and when people see it and they want to join they can uh, but we want to get the message we have out as far as we can you know my heart you know how I feel and you know God's heart how he feels so I'm asking you to do that this morning thank you um, at the end of the message I'm going to have a little slide there where you can see how to give to our local church as you know this would be a time where offerings and tithing would probably dip these past months have been hard on everybody but um, God has been good to us and we ask you to continue to um, to give both in offerings and tithing these things are needed for your local church so God bless you I'd like to get into uh, the message at this time. I um, entitled this message, God's Love Lifted Me. God's Love Lifted Me. Would you bow your heads with me? We're going to ask God to help us today. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh God, we give ourselves to you. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Lord, it is you that we're preaching. Lord, it is the, the, to those, God, that you have 
have sent your Son to seek and to save. Uh, Lord, it is to them that we preach. And to those, Lord, that do know you, to them we preach, O oh God. And, and Lord, I just pray that uh, in all of this, my Father, your anointing would be upon the word of the Lord and your servant. And your, your word, O oh God, would penetrate the hearts of people. We ask all of this in the name of the Lord, that souls that don't know you would actually come to know you. Souls that are discouraged, have gone away, fallen away, become discouraged and frustrated. I pray that they too would feel the very power and presence of a, the Holy Ghost, Lord, dealing with their spirit and giving them what they need today. Lord, I pray save everywhere. Save souls everywhere. We ask it in your precious name as we share this message, oh God, save souls everywhere in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, the title of this message is God's Love Lifted Me. Give me just a moment to make sure we are okay here in uh, our... Um, there we are. Thank you for that. Um, I'd like to read, first of all, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 through 19. The scripture said there, again, 1 John, and then I'll be reading John 3, 16. But here in 1 John 4, 16 through 19, he wrote and he said, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. This is the subject of this message. God is love and God's love. We want to talk about that today. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, can we say amen to that one? So are we in this world. As he is, so are we. Verse 18. We want to talk about this. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Verse 19, another powerful scripture. We love him because he first loved us. John 3, 16, the Bible said, an old familiar, but it remains totally powerful. Scripture, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As I began to hear from the Lord on this subject, there was a song that came, and you heard it in the title, Love Lifted Me. Love Lifted Me. Another song came and said, If ever I love thee, my Jesus, it is now. Now, there are other songs out there that speak about the love of the Lord. So, as we begin this, we're talking about that love and what this means to us. There are things going on in the world right now that you're hearing a lot of preaching and a lot of teaching about them, and they're all very important. They focus our eyes on the Lord and what is coming upon us. The reason we preach is so people can prepare. The reason we teach is so they can prepare themselves, ourselves to go through the time that we live in that is no longer out there in the future. It has come to us now. For some of us, what is happening in the, our world is brand new. You may have never been raised up to know about it, but it has come. Others of us We've known about it and heard about it all of our lives. Some have said, I don't know if it ever will come, but it has, it has begun. Yeah. The hour is late and the time is near. The end of all things concerning the day of grace, the day of salvation, the end of that is upon us. It is a time that we want to recognize things that deal with heaven. The extreme urgent, inescapable importance of heavenly things. 
And as we go through these days here on the earth, which have been prophesied before, we want to lift up our eyes and pay attention to what is coming from heaven. It may be important what is going on on the earth. Oh, yes, it is. But as one dear brother, I'm going to name him, Brother Adrian Varlack, one of the great bishops in our church to this very day, preached a message one time about this. He said, I know a lot's going on on earth. It's been about 30 years ago that I heard him preach it. But he said, I know a lot's going on here on the earth. The signs and all of that. He said, but I'll tell you something that's more important than what's going on here. He said, I believe what is going on in heaven is more important than what is going on here in the earth. We want to set our eyes upon that which is going on from the throne of God. Love lifted me. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 13. The, the love chapter it's called in the Bible. But this last verse said these words. said, and now abides faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. The scripture said further, charity abides forever. Faith, hope, they're here for this world. But in eternity, they will no longer be in a necessity for faith and hope. We will be there. But charity has been described, and let me say it again, God is love. Charity has been described as God's love in action. Can we get an amen? God's love, as long as there's God, there will be God's love. He is from everlasting to everlasting. His love will never end. It is that love which we must have. It is not an earthly love. This love is from heaven. I want to say something about it now. I hope we get it right. This is not a characteristic of God. God is love. This love can't be gotten just be, well through any other me method except what was said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. This love only comes to us and gets into our spirit. It's here already, all around us. It's, it's looking for a way into our lives. It's even working when we don't know God. But it, this love of God, this God who is love, is trying to get into our lives. He doesn't want to just be around us. He wants to be in us. Jesus Christ is the fullest expression of God's love. Now, I'm coming to something here. As we continue down this road of life, the day is coming that's going to declare what you and I really are in the Lord or not. We, if we intend to make heaven our home, there is things coming upon every child of God or those who profess to know the Lord that are going to reveal whether you really have God or whether you don't. And if you have God, if you have God, God is love. There is something very, very immeasurably powerful about the love that God is. You're not dealing with, again, a characteristic of God. Something God has. You're dealing with God who is love. We must be of God in, these hour, in this hour, in this day. We, therefore, must be filled with God's love. If we really are God's people, we will have made preparation to continue until the end comes. No matter what comes upon us, I'm, I'm going somewhere here. I say it again, God's love is a lifting of us up love. Only God's love, get it now, will carry us through these times that are coming. Faith will not be enough. Hope will not be enough. Good works will not be enough. 
Amen. There's nothing out there that will replace this, which is actually God's love. Amen. It alone yes. is that which will keep us through it all. We sing the song, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. In another song we sang, said in times like these, we need an anchor. Another song we sang, I kind of like the beat when I got a hold of it. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Yeah, I'm going to say it again. We need to say it loud as they said in that song years ago. Say it loud and say it long. This God is one thing above it all. He is love. In our country today, we have something that is passing for love. And I do want to say it may even be real love as concerns earthly love, which people have one for another. But the love of God excels that in its quality and what it is. We may love mother and daddy. Daddy and mother may love us. We may love our friends. We may love our dog. We may love our country. But God's love excels all of that. We may love our work. We may love the church. But God's love excels that. His love is supreme. It is not puppy love. It is not a crush on God. It is not a summer romance. It is not a love that exists as long as I can dig it. <laughs> as we used to say back in the 80s. His love is eternal love. Out of His love, God created Adam and Eve. Placed them in a garden full of God's expression of love. It was, the, it was paradise. And it was there in that place they committed that catastrophic sin. There was no way back, absolutely, for anyone who sinned in that day. No way back to God's friendship, His presence, His fellowship, relationship. It wasn't there. But in that garden, the love of God, speaking, there, I believe, in the third chapter of Genesis, the Bible tells us that out of Eve's seed would come someone that would crush the head of Satan. But would Satan would bruise his heel, but he would crush the head of Satan. God provided them and us the only way back. His name is Jesus, and we ought to say it a whole lot more. The world doesn't mind using the name of Jesus to curse with. The house of God ought to use it a whole lot more in every way that it needs to be used. He's the way. He's the truth. And He's the life. Praise be unto the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Son of God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bow down, Lord, before you today. You are the Lord whose name is above every other name that is named in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus, you are the Christ to the, and the Lord of all. To the glory of God your Father. You are still the way, the truth, and the life. Before there was a world. In the Godhead, the Bible said, the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, the Bible speaks about Jesus. And it said, from the foundation of the world, he was the Lamb of God that was slain. This was well known in the Godhead before the earth was ever founded that he would be coming as the Lamb of God. The question could be asked, why would he come? I'm coming to something today. He came because God is love. The world has some love songs. Love makes the world go round. What the world needs now is love Sweet love. Back in the 70s when I was in college, a movie came out called Love Story. There was a famous line that came out of the mouth of one of the actors 
in that movie. And I'm going to tell you now, I never saw it. I don't intend to ever look at that movie. It was a filthy movie. But here's what that actor said in the movie. He said, love is never having to say you're sorry. Those are words straight from Satan. <laughs> They're not the words of the Lord. So the world has gotten what love, real love is, gotten it completely wrong so many times in so many cases. But God came to show us what real love is by sending His only begotten Son. I want to say this right now. If we don't have this real love, I said it a few minutes ago, there's going to come a time when that which comes upon you is going to reveal what you have. God is what we better have, and He is love. <laughs> Jesus did not bring... Uh, excuse me, God came to show us what real love is by sending His only begotten Son. Jesus did not bring a love that would only last as far as this life. He was love which is eternal too. That we could participate with this love and have fellowship and friendship and relationship with God Himself. Man, what a deal this is that God so loved us that He sent His only begotten Son whose name is Jesus. I do not know all the things that are going to come from this love. Because they are innumerable. But I can tell you this. The love today that is uh, today is what this is the love today that he wants every human being on earth to experience. I'm coming to it. He did not come here. Why don't you say it with me? He did not, not you all, but he did not come here. You out in internet land. Jesus did not come here just to, in big letters, be the Savior. The Lord. The Christ. That's a state of being. Be. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's an active thing called a verb. Action words. He wasn't just a being Lord. He was a doing Lord. His love is a seeking love. Now we're getting to it. His love is a seeking love. Seeking to restore God's creation. The highest of all His creation. He is seeking to restore all of mankind back into the image that He first put in us in the Garden of Eden when He made Adam and Eve. And that we could be the sons of God, the children of God, once again. That's what Satan stole from every one of us. There in that garden. That highest of all, that love relationship with God, who is eternal love, that was stolen from us by the devil through sin. And we helped him do it. It is this kind of love this quality of God's love from heaven that Jesus warned us in Matthew 24, I believe, verse 13. He said, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Those who did love the Lord because of the greatness, I want to be real clear here. Oh, Jesus, help me. Help me with this. Because of the greatness of sin, I don't even know if I realize how great sin is. That even the very elect of God could be fooled and deceived by the devil. I may think I know how great sin is today. But I don't know that I do. But God does. God does. He doesn't have an antidote for this. He has the answer. It is God's love, the real thing. I do not know that I know the depths and strength of the attractiveness, the attractive power of Satan's temptations 
the attractive power of this world, both of its evil attraction. And let me go further. When Satan gets a hold of you, a lion, when he gets a hold of anything, he does not act like a buddy. He is not somebody who is coexisting with you. He is a dictator and he's a killer. When this evil attraction gets a hold of a man, woman, boy, or girl who once knew the Lord, it's not coming to coexist, let you live for Jesus and the devil. It's coming to take dominion, domination, humiliation will be where you are. He's coming to humiliate and to become a dictator and a God over you. While yet not being God Almighty, He's the God of this world, the Prince of the power of the air. Because of that, the love of God and people will get cold. It will die. But Jesus said the next verse, but he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. I was talking to somebody this morning, one of our members, about why I use the content that I do when I preach. I do not give you three scriptures and then we have a few words and a prayer. I don't do that. I know that even the Lord said in these days, He said, my people are, dis my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, not the number of Bibles they have, but they don't know the Word of God. And they do not know the God of the Word. And they throw out a bunch of cliches that they hear somebody say, sounds good to me. They put on all kind of bracelets that say things. I'm not going against that. I'm saying that is not the Word of God down inside of you. That is not God's truth that sets you free. They wonder why they struggle so much. Why some, nobody ever told them, you can be free from sin. Yes. My people are destroyed because people are not telling them the truth. But I want you to hear the truth today. This is entitled, this section is entitled The Strength of God's Love. This love of God is so powerful. Now I may not know how powerful the devil is, but I know this. God's love is so powerful that it will overcome every obstacle. Yes. It will overcome the strength of every temptation, every attraction of the devil. In fact, this love of God will let us know that the same blood that was given by Jesus, shed by Jesus to wash away our sins, was also shed to sanctify our spirit man, our soul from the old man, that old nature, whereby we could get rid of the dictator nature that says, even though you got saved, here you still want to do wrong. When you would do right, you end up doing wrong. What you hate doing, you do it. What you should do, you don't do it. God said, I'll sanctify you holy. Yes. My grace is more than sufficient. Not that you should continue living in sin. I repeat that. Not that you should continue to live in sin. For the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. God's Son did not come to give you a salvation that only worked on the day of your birth. In Jesus, He came to give you a salvation that will work every single day of your life. In the midst of it all, through it all, at the bottom of it all, and above it all, around it all, it is God's love that will make the difference. I repeat, this love of God is actually Himself. Himself. He becomes the hedge around you. He becomes a wall of protection on your left, on your right. He becomes your rear defense. He becomes that which fights for you in the front. But it's all from Him. It's all in His love. Of all of the nine fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> the Bible said love is number one. Yes. I'll tell you, good works won't get you there. Although people will talk about how good a person was. How much He did for this and for that. But that's not the love of God. No. Giving our body to be burned for a cause. Giving our life for the country. That is not the love of God. Giving your life as a policeman, a fireman, as a first responder, that is not the love of God. Amen. The love of God is God, not what you can do. Yes. 
It is God who is. And when he comes in, oh, I got to get to it. <laughs> God's love. <laughs> oh, would you bear with me? This is too much. Oh, my. It is a reaching out love. It is a seeking love. It is a saving love. It is a keeping love. It's an abiding love. Hallelujah. Praise God, it's a love that you can't even think about anything else when that love is all over you. Hallelujah. It is a strong love. Let me tell you about that love. It is so strong that it will attack Satan without fear. When the devil comes to take one of God's lambs, the love in the shepherd of that flock should rear up. It won't be his love. Amen. It won't be because he don't want to lose anybody. Yeah, that, those things are good. But when the love of God rises up, I'm going to have to leave some of my notes. But it says God's love constrains us. I looked that word up. I had my own definition of constrain. But here's what it's like. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who was riding uh, back in the western days on a buckboard or and suddenly uh, the horses that were pulling it the hitch where the horses were hitched to the to the buckboard it broke loose and the guy that was driving it the horses pulled him out onto the ground and if he holds on he's He's being pulled by a force out there all over the ground. I could use other examples. But I'm looking at this. God's love will cause Alan South to be pulled to people who are being attacked by the devil. I won't be coming in there to make peace with Satan. I won't be coming to call for worldly help for that individual. But I'll be coming like David did. I'll be coming in with weapons of warfare that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'll be coming because of God's love that constrains me to get everybody I can back from the devil. Yes. I don't just look at them and say, pity poor, my, that's sad. Look what's happened over there. Oh, that's so sad, and I go right on about my life. But I'm constrained. I don't have a love that comes and goes. This love of God does not come and go. At all times, He loves everybody with equal strength. He loves us all, whether they receive Him or whether they don't. God's love I can't tell you all about it. Uh, what little I can say today lets you know that if you don't know God today, He is for you. Yes, He is. He's trying to get you back into relationship with Him. Oh, yes, He is. He has sent out. Amen. The Bible said in one place, hallelujah, He looked around for somebody who would stand up in the midst of the gap. Uh, amen. Uh, to make up the hedge. Uh, but he found nobody. And here's where it says in another place. said it like this. So I, I made bare my own arm. I pulled my sword up out of its scabbard. And I went to battle for you myself. He sent His only begotten Son whose name is still Jesus. He's also the way and He is the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, He is. His, the Bible said the truth. Amen. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to get down between the joints and the marrow. Amen. The flesh. Amen. The mind, the soul, the spirit. It's able to get down where you really live and able to set you free. When David came out there, Goliath was like a lion. He had Israel in his mouth and he was turning his head back and forth, shaking Israel. She was scared to death back in her tent. Her knees were knocking and here comes David. He saw what was going on. He looked around and said, what, what, what is this? God has looked around. He sees what is. And he's saying, well, we're not going to let this go on anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of it. Who are you? Mm -hmm. 
He didn't come in here looking like some king, some prince. He didn't have on some suit of armor from earth. He didn't have a whole lot of money in armies. He was just God in the flesh. And he was here for us. His name is Jesus, the express will of God, the express image of God, the actual expression of God's love in its fullest extent, stepped out on the scene of time and said, I, Father, will rescue these people. I'll do it. And he stepped out. He didn't come by might nor by power, but he came by the Spirit. And he came to destroy the kingdom of Satan. I can hear him speaking sometime, somewhere, when we didn't record it in the Bible saying, Oh, Satan, I've come to destroy you just like David destroyed Goliath. Get ready. I'm going to finish you. I bet he called him by name, Lucifer. Satan, you old dragon, you old serpent, you great mountain, before me and my servants, you're going to become nothing less than a bunch of clods of dirt on the ground. They're going to walk over you, carrying on in my name, in the name of love. I'm not talking about the Supremes uh, that used to sing and dance. I'm talking about God in the name of love. God sent His only begotten Son. Oh, hallelujah! Bless the name of the Lord. He didn't come down here with a weak love. It was a, it was a good love as long as I could handle things myself. Mm -mm. He could handle it all and he did. Yes. God's love in its strength will pull us, will constrain us, will compel us, will propel us into a love for people. Listen church, listen everybody if you will. The love of God going to deal with those heavy chains of hatred. Yes. They're going to be gone. You used to hear a song, I loved it back in my lifetime, when God dips his pen of love in my heart. He writes my soul a message. He wants me to know his spirit, all divine. Oh my, fills this happy soul of mine. Oh, when God dips his love in my heart. Oh, I wish I could say praise the Lord with you, but I'm going to say it here. Praise God. He has dipped his love in my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, God, amen, won't let you keep going along. I don't like how they do things. They got all those faults. Uh-uh. Rather, we will love our brothers and sisters with all their faults. Even in the, listen, we got some kind of picky people in the house of God. Well, I love that, but I won't love this. I want you to know God didn't love this and not that. He so loved us that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him. Mm-hmm. He, mm-hmm. Yeah, oh God. Jesus, my, my, my. He loved the lepers. He loved the adulterers. He loved the fornicators. He loved the demon-possessed. Mm -hmm. He loved the tax collector. He loved plain old sinners. He loved everybody because every last one of us, the Bible said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But, oh, thank God. God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet His enemies, Christ died for us. He gave us His only Son. This Strength of love excels any enemy there is on earth, and it is stronger than death. It'll cause people that are picky, hypocritically, actually hypocritical. I love this one, but I can't love that. He'll cause those people to actually love the unlovable. Love the unlovable. I'm going to say some things, church. You may not like it, but I'm going to say it. Listen, the Lord even loves the pedophile who has done all the horrible, unspeakable things to children. He loves the very people who have taken a hold in our schools as teachers and done sexually exploitative things to children. He loves those who are selling children into slavery. Yeah, you may not like this, but God loves them. And he wants to save them. And some of us sitting on the pew today were some of those people. Hallelujah. 
I just want to take a moment here. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me because you know what I was. I don't want anybody else to know about it, but, oh, God, I know, and I know you know. Thank you for loving me. I was filthy. I was filthy. I was, it was unspeakable, but you had mercy on me, and I praise you today for the love you showed a wretch like me for that amazing grace, but God loves everybody. I know you don't like it, but he loves even Hitler until he left this world. He loved Judas Iscariot till he left this world. He loved the Romans who were killing his people till they left this world. He loved everybody. The church can't be picky. God's people cannot love who you want to love. Hallelujah. He loves everybody. We need to shake off that shackle under the blood of Jesus and the love of God. Get with God till he loves through you so much that you can't not, you can't, you are compelled, you are constrained to love everybody. If they stink up of liquor, love them. If they're so high, I know we don't like this kind of preaching, but if they've even killed our children, we got to love them anyway. What are you talking about? Nobody's killed your child. Well, God's son got killed. And God still loved us. Yes. If God's in you, he loves them just like he loved his, if those that killed his son. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what pastor's talking about today. God himself is loving them through us. This will not be an earthly love. This needs to be the love that can only come from God. Yes. But he said, as many as received him, to them gave he weakness as sons of God know. John chapter 1 verse 12 it said but as many as received him the Lord to them gave he power to become the sons of God. What power to heal people? No. Power to love people. Love every one of them. No respecter of persons. No respecter of creed color, nation, or anything, age, education, a wealth, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what problems they had. It didn't matter. God so loved the world. My God, I want to say to anybody sitting out there in this congregation right here, this pastor has said words to this congregation. Said if people come in here and they and you know them from being downtown on the street doing this, that, and the other, we want those people. Pastor, I don't want them in my church. Well, you're not this church. Hallelujah. This church intends to please the Lord. And if anybody's going to show it up and start it off, it better be the pastor. I want people to know you're welcome here, but I want you to know something that you, everyone that is welcome, I was welcome, but I was lost. And if I was going to stay with Jesus, I was going to have to give up the things that made me a lost soul. Do not think that when you come to God as you are, you're doing anything wrong. You're doing something perfectly right. Yes. But do not think that when God gets through with you, you're going to be the same as you were when you came to Him. Because yes. He's going to make you a brand new creation Amen. in Christ Jesus. You're not going to be what you were and you're not going to continue in the awful things you've been doing. Hallelujah. He's going to change you and give you a robe of righteousness to live righteous, to live holy. Don't tell me you can't do it. Nobody said you could. But in the power of God's love, in the strength of the Son of God, if you'll follow God and don't stop everything He shows you, you do it. Everything He, he teaches you, you believe it, you practice it. He's going to take you from glory to glory. He'll save you, sanctify you, fill you with the Holy Ghost, call you into the ministry, make you able to live a holy life, give you faith you never had, give you joy and peace you never had. I'm going to say that I wrote it down. Satan, you haven't got a chance against God's love and you can't stop me either. I'm going to continue my work for the Lord. You're not going to stop me. I'm not going to work in my power, but I'm going to work in the power of God's love. I know time is up. I don't know how long I've been preaching. Uh, let me get a look here at it. They tell me don't preach too long. Uh, okay, well, you have to bear with me today. This love of God is going to deal, listen church, 
This love of God is not going to cause you to feel good where, you, where this love compels you to go, among whom you're going to go, into the arenas of the devil that you're going to go. It's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be awful for your body. It was awful for his body. But because of love that was his passion and constrained him, he went all the way through it all. He went all the way to the cross and he died on it. He never came back. He didn't come down until his time, his work was done, until he could say it is finished. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you some things. Well, let me not tell you. Let God tell you. You mountains of Satan, I'm going to name some. No matter what your name is, communism, atheism, agnosticism, Islam, Shintoism, Buddhism, Taoism, Zoroasterism, astrology, uh, witchcraft, spiritism, demonology, you name it. Whatever the mountains of the devil's house are, I want you to know the love of God is God. And when we come there, when we come there, there is no weapon formed against us that is able to prosper. Satan, no matter what form you take, <laughs> God said, I'm not going to send an angel to deal with you. I'm coming myself. Yeah. Church of God of the Bible. Praise God. What propelled God to do this is precisely because of what He is and who He is. He also has called us the body of Christ, His church. He's called us to be that also. That is that God is love. What He is, we are. Let me talk to you about a nickel for a minute. I'm going to have to quit here. I'm not done, but I'm going to have to quit. There's a misunderstanding about God's love. There's a, there's, a, there's a feeling, a thinking, a belief that you can have the love of God, but you don't actually have to show it the way God did. Just keep it to yourself. Let me tell you about God and His love. It's like a nickel. It's got a front side. And it does have a what? You can't have the one God is the God that so loved that he gave. The church cannot have love, but never go seek. Yes. Yes. Let me tell you something else about this love of God. By its very nature, the love of God cannot abide I don't want to say it. Cannot abide watching someone in need of that love and stand over here yes. by himself. I say again, the love of God can't abide it. He hates it. He, his love is by its very character a seek out that which is lost love. By its very character, you cannot describe it any other way. It cannot abide the lostness of mankind. He therefore sent not an angel. He sent his only begotten son to seek and to save that which is lost. Everybody was lost. But it came. The church cannot escape the message of go ye. She has escaped it many times. She's had many reasons. She's had many viewpoints. But in this hour, the church is going to be uh, rediscovering its identity. We either will or we won't. We're in the day of fish or cut bait. What's, there was another one like that. Put up or shut up. But the church of God of the Bible is, is going to be the church of God who is love and that that church cannot abide anybody, anywhere, for any reason, being lost and we don't go get them. Some of them will say no. Some of them will curse you to your face. But somebody in the kingdom of the devil, when they see the light and the love unhindered by 
respect of persons, discrimination, race, creed, color, economic, social status, any the, the, anything of that nature. That love doesn't see all of that. It just sees the lostness of the soul. I think probably I'm going to stop here. Oh, I, well, let me say one more thing about the love of God. I want to say that I learned more about this as I got to, pa to, to, to preparing this message. When God's love abides, there, and the Bible calls it, the love that passeth knowledge. But right there with it is peace that passes all understanding. When the love of God rules, the peace of God rules. I'll say it again. When God's love rules, it doesn't come in in weakness. It comes in in all power. And God, the Bible said, is the God of all peace. He that keeps his mind stayed on the Lord, God will keep him in perfect peace. The wicked, uh, there is no peace, saith God, to the wicked. But we that have known and believed the love that God has for us and has given to us, we abide in peace. In a world today where there is no peace, no matter how much they talk about it, they can't make it happen. But there is a God, uh, amen, uh, who's in heaven of heavens. He's in the atmosphere and he's in the earth and he's also under the earth. This God is not a God who has peace. He is the God of all peace. You don't get a part of him uh, when you get him. And when he, when he comes in, he brings love, joy. Like we've never known joy unspeakable and full of glory. Praise God. I'm going to have to quit. When I get home, I'll be saying, well, you should have preached that. But I can't do it. My time is probably up. I want you to know, Church of God, members of this congregation, if you've been listening today, if you've had a watch party, thank God. But I want you to know today, God wants his house to be a house that will get down like the good Samaritan. Not because pastor said so or because God said so. You're constrained, but because you are constrained by the love of God and you couldn't do anything else. When we get the chance to gather back in this building again, some of us are going to come back beaten up and bruised. But I want the whole church before we ever get back in the building. I want everybody in our church to be praying for our people. Some of our people don't have very much at all. And what they did have, the devil has done his best to take it away from them. But I want our people to know that the church that they go to is wrapping its arms around them. Not in words only. But if we are needed by them. We'll say, here am I. Here am I. I, I call on me. Oh, I want this congregation to be a house that pleases God. When we come back, there'll be people, there'll be people coming in here. That, hey, Amen. They're not like us. But oh yes, they are. Yeah. I used to be just like them. Yeah. And now I want them to become what, and have what I, have. I want to share. I'm going to ask all of you to share this message if you don't mind. Share it. All of you leaders, call those people that I gave you to call. Don't let a one of them uh, feel like nobody cares. Uh, we need each other today to love one to another, not just for one another. And at this time, I'm going to pray. And I want you to pray with me that God would reach out to those to whom this was sent. If it was you, just rejoice, but pray that others would receive this God. We want everybody saved. 
Let me say one last thing. If you're sitting around, you're looking for a place to go to church that actually cares what happens to you. We're not perfect here. We've got our own faults. But we mean Jesus every step of the way. And we're trying to get where he wants us to be. We're all working together to that end. And so if you see something wrong with us, bear with us. We'll bear with you. We just want to see people know the Lord and let him help us work all the other stuff out. He will do it. But if you don't have a place to go and you happen upon this video or some of you out there in the internet are saying, i got family there in the county of Tulsa or Sand Springs, let me let them know there's a church over there somewhere and he, we're not the only church that cares. We certainly are not. But here's one that cares what happens to you and we'll do our best to minister Jesus to you. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, there are souls today that do not know you as their personal Savior. For them, first of all, around the world, people are dying. They're going to leave this world this very day, even while I'm speaking. But before they leave this world, my Father, I ask you to reach down and I ask you to continue to do what you do to let them feel the heaviness, Father. I don't know them, but you know every last one that's getting ready to come into eternity. And we're calling for all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. Oh God, before it is everlasting too late to feel that heavy weight of the convicting power of your precious Holy Ghost. Let the name of Jesus come into their minds when they never even thought about him before. Others have been forced never to think about him, but I pray let Jesus come into their mind, in their spirit, in this hour of their lives. I pray, oh God, move in your great mercy and love for those people, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Those that are in our neighborhoods, on our jobs, in the schools we're going to go back to. Father, in the church, when they come in here, God, wherever they are, where we are, I pray, God, help us, oh God, to reach everyone we can. And if you don't know Jesus right now, I'm going to pray that sinner's prayer with you and ask you to pray it with me. And if you really mean it from your heart, God will come into your heart. I won't have to tell you he did. He will tell you for himself. Father, you might pray this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm lost. I don't know Jesus. I'm a sinner. But, oh God, I have wanted, or I want it now, that I could actually come and, Lord, know the love of God that passes all knowledge. That I could know the Savior who gave his all to rescue me. And that I could have you become my Heavenly Father. I want to come in out of this awful place I've been in. Yea, hallelujah, in the kingdom of the devil. I want to be saved, oh God. I want to be delivered and I want to be set free. My sin's gone. Jesus, save my soul today. In your precious name I cry out. Have mercy on me. Forgive me of all of my sins. I renounce them all in your presence today. Come into my heart. Be Lord, oh God. Let me feel that love of God come all over me. And I don't ever want to go back where I came from. But I'll serve you all the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to close here in just a moment. I'm going to put a slide on the screen. And... Uh, It'll be there when I stop talking. If you would like to support our ministry, uh, I ask you to look at uh, this, and you can either send your money by cash app or by check. But our church is not about money. We just need our money to, we need enough money to, to do what we do for the Lord. We want to do everything we can. And if you feel good about it, but first of all, support your own church. Do not give us your tithes that belongs to your church. Don't give us the offerings that belong to your church. If you have anything left to give to us, you give. I ask you to share this message when I get off of here, if you feel good about it. And um, 
We love you. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to us. There will be, um, on your Facebook there, you'll see a place where you can get a hold of Restoration Church of God of Prophecy. It's on the page where you're at. If you want to support us financially, it'll be here in this slide. Thank you for being here today. We love you, and we welcome you, and we want to get to know you. Send us every prayer request you've got. We will pray about it till God answers for you. May the Lord bless you today. Uh, we'll be coming again on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for another message. God bless you all is our prayer.